Sorry for that. Rockin'. Adam Savage here in my cave. And uh, I am about to embark on some machining. I'm going to machine four pieces. I talk a lot about how over COVID and the lockdown, I took the time to improve my skills at the mill and the lathe. Uh, and to improve the refinement of my ability to work in tinier and tinier increments. Chasing zeros is what machinists call it. And among the things that I have said many times is that I am an aesthetic machinist, not a mechanical machinist. Or traditionally, I have been an aesthetic, not a mechanical machinist. All that being said, uh, I'm about to do some aesthetic machining because... Well, I'm still working slowly, piece by piece, on my R2-D2 to make it better and refine it. Uh, and on the front of R2's battery boxes are these little greeblies, and there's four, four of them. <laughs> there's four of them, and they're identical. And I made these years ago, but I think I gave my set to Don B's. And we made castings of that. And so we had a mold of that for my secret R2-D2 Builders Club. Ooh, wow. Here is the casting. Yeah, you can see it's all whoop, whoop. This is what happens when you put a casting under pressure for 20 years. Um, I am going to remake this part in aluminum. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to remake this part in aluminum. And I'm going to make four of them. And so you will get to see this. And this is aesthetic machining. Like for this, close is good enough, right? Like we can do some of these details on the belt sander and no one's going to be the wiser. That's the nice thing about aesthetic machining. There are, uh, how many parts to this? There's a few parts to this. There's this long piece, which I can probably make on the table saw. This piece, which is also probably, you know, ganged up on the table saw. This is the most complicated part. This is this little faceted jewel of which I have three of four that are painted blue. And since this is painted with original R2 blue, I am going to pop these off of the castings I have. But yeah, we're going to make some R2 parts today, I think. Yeah, it's only 10.05. I should have plenty of time. All right. First, I'm going to look through my chunky chunks for some pieces that can be utilized for this. <laughs> okay, cool. So there's that and that and that and that. And between those, we're going to make four of those. First up, I need the main stock of this thing. Stock, 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 stock. So I need this to be precisely 0.44 inches wide. 0.44. I'm lucky in that I had the original R2-D2, Kenny Baker's, next to my desk at ILM for a couple of years. And so I am assured that the measurements of these come directly off the original aluminum ones made by uh, aerospace engineers in Britain back in the 70s. 0.44. It's a strange dimension, but it's fine. It's 11 millimeters. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought of this last night. I was drifting off to bed and I was thinking about the fact that I mentioned here on the channel, I called five thousandths one eighth of a millimeter. <laughs> and people are like, are you kidding me? You're bringing fractions <laughs> to the metric system. And then I realized that you could call, uh, this is totally me drifting off to sleep joke. Uh, you could call one millimeter uh, one-fifth of half a centimeter. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It made me smile, and then I fell asleep. Uh, okay, so 0.44. Uh, what I'm going to do, since all of these pieces that are the correct thickness are um, have bad finishes on them, I'm going to get close. 0.45. All right, I uh, cut them. I thought the camera was running. I made all sorts of great jokes. I was hilarious. None of it was saved. Okay, these are my four pieces. We are going to gang these up. 
We're gonna gang them up and smooth them out. Gang them up, smooth them out. Now, what I want to tell you, that's a great finish. That's a nice finish. Uh, that is a confirmation for me that the uh, that my new PM seven twenty eight VT is actually really uh, nice and trimmed in. Yeah, I get a little artifact, little artifact there, but I don't have to worry about that. Now I'm going to turn these over, put them on, well, deburr the edges, turn them over, put them on parallels, and uh, do the other sides. This new mill is shaping up lovely. The, uh, the surface finish is wonderful. Uh, I need to figure out how thick this is right now. So I need to take uh, 20, 20, 21 thou. Everything I'm measuring is right on the money. I want exactly to, to a thousand and I'm getting it. So this is lovely. Perfect. All right, that's good. We can uh, bandsaw. We can bandsaw that. So I want these to be roughly seven, three quarters of an inch tall. Three quarters of an inch wide. Oh, I see. I cut the wrong line. Okay, so I need to take a lot more material off. Let's see. I want to. I want these things to be 0.475. Yep. Which means. Oh, right. I've got a mark here, don't I? I do. Excellent. That's exactly half. All right. So we can bring this back up. Let's do a 20,000 cut. Drat. That's okay. I can fix that. I am dumb.
that was silly. Okay, so there's my zero point. I'm moving towards these guys now. And I'm first gonna cut out the big rectangles that are they. And I'm gonna do that on the table saw. Yeah, it's three quarters of an inch wide. Ooh, 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 ooh. They're hot, they're hot. They all covered. So now I almost have, wow, it made the water warm. There. And these are all getting, these are all getting glued together. What? I know. Uh, yeah, they will get glued together because they're aesthetic pieces. And if I use Loctite on these, it should be fine. Um, should hold nicely. Loctite is meant to do that, to hold on to metal for a while. And over the next decade or two of expansion and contraction from heat of these parts, I'm not too worried about it letting go. I, I will have a couple pieces that are actually screwed together. But some of these are just going to be glued. Whoa. I know. It's totally crazy. Um, so, uh, right. What I have are these four pieces that are going to be these guys. And I need to get them all to be the same size. Right now they are... I need them to be... Yeah, three quarters of an inch wide, and right now they are 50 thou over. So I'm going to put them in the mill, take out a little bit. Wow, they are not consistent. Yeah, all right. Even, okay, let's see. Yeah, table saw, table saw, table saw can be problematic. Okay, but under no circumstances are we, yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, so that'll be on top. That'll be on top. That'll be on top. That'll be on top. Here we go. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to gang these up over here. Okay, so all, oops, all four of those are nice. Okay, so that means that I should be able to, yeah, just uh, drop this. Thirty-five thou, thirty thou. Let's do thirty thou, and then that gives brings us in within five thou of our goal. So now let's see here. Oh yeah, here. So we're gonna come down. to hit these marks exactly. There we go. Five thou off of our goal. These big bits, these big end mills, they will 
I watched a machinist who I was working with brush some material off and accidentally, whoop, right here, lost the whole tip of his finger. All right, we're gonna go for five more thou here. Five microns off, good enough. It's almost like a skim pass. Five thousandths is just slightly thicker than a sheet of paper. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm one thou over. We're gonna call that good. Now these are not all the same length, and I need them to be. So, oh, I can do it like that, nice. Uh, right, let's move that away. Let's figure out how much I wanna take out. 1.75, nice round numbers, all of these. So I want 1.75, that's where we're going. So we'll put that there and put that there. We'll put that there. Wait, yeah, that's just above the vice level, good. I'm putting them on either side of the vice jaws so I can uh, distribute the pain. Nice cut, feels good. That's nice. That's like 60 thou. That line there, that line, I'm not getting my hand any closer. That's what we want to hit. So I'm going to guess that is about 25 thou. Let's see how good I am. That's 25, that's actually 26 now. Nope, we're gonna go all the way to 30. There we go. Look at that, I'm about 10 thou over. Still see a shade of that line. So we're going to come down another 10 thou. And this is like a spring pass. Okay, so I've got my four parts. They are all uh, they are all exactly the same. They are square. They are square to each other. So now I'm going to mill out a channel on their backside, and that's in the other mill. Woohoo! <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to cut this face piece here. Uh, yeah, now I'm going to cut that, and that is a 20 degree angle. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use one of my new angle blocks. I have other angle blocks that don't have stops on them, like this, and that's great. But that's even better because I can nestle something into that corner, and I get a little more. I get a little more grabby grab out of it. Now we're gonna do this in one pass, each one of these. Right. 
looking pretty good. Let's bring it in a little bit more. Yeah, that's lovely. It's exactly what I was hoping for. And it's at just, look at that. It's at just the right level. Okay, it's a little bit past, but that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, locked, turned on. with that. Those are great. That's just what I wanted out of that. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the slot here that comes in. And I'm going to do that on all four of these. I wanted to cut the, sl the slanted part first so I didn't have to do all that work cutting through all the bottom of this. That's why. Oh, those are lovely. Look at that. Oh, those just look absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm also going to do these slant cuts, which I figured out is a 10 degree angle. So we're going to bring this up a little bit. I think we're going to bring it up. Oh no, we don't have to. We can keep it down. Yeah, and that's as low as I can get, right? Yeah, that's as low as I can get. That's good. Good, good, good. I love how it, here, watch this. Oh, so close. Hang on. Nope, just a tiny bit more. That is fucking close enough. So we're gonna lock that there. We're gonna zero that. Yeah, that can't move. And hopefully all these cuts, hoo hoo, we'll see, are actually gonna line up with each other. This is the scary part. Oh, cool. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. All right. There we go. I'm not putting the donkey out when I'm sad. Got to blow it out. Oh, that is so freaking satisfying. I can't even tell you. Here's where we are so far. We've got, uh, that's what we're replicating. We've got the three bars. We've got the three of those guys. We've got the three of these guys. And let's take one of each and put them together. We got uh, that that sits on the bottom. Come saw, like that, yep. And then this sits on there, like that. 
Yep, there we go. See that? We're burning forward. Oh man, I mean, yeah, I look, I made these back in the day and I remember I think I laser cut these and then cut these out on the bandsaw, if I remember correctly. Uh, out of plastic, not aluminum. Okay, so there's that, there's that, there's that, there's that. Now it's time for this bad boy. Uh, next up, I'm going to be making this little part here, this little clevis, the center part here. And I've already cut a, uh, yeah, see that? And that's going to be a whole bunch of them, or roughly four. Roughly four. <laughs> Five is right out. All right. We are, look at this. We are on the home stretch here. I mean, home stretch. There's still a couple of hours of solid work to do. But, um... Yeah, I've got little parts. I've got little jewels to fit inside little parts. It's all sort of coming together. Um, and some of this stuff I've been doing off camera simply because now I'm in the sluice and I get impatient because I just want to get the thing done. I want to have the thing. And maybe that's part of the problem here. Maybe I should put this away for today. I've avoided it long enough. What accent is that? Whose accent could that be? It's not consistent. It's it's senseless. Um, good morning, everybody. Adam Savage in my cave. Um, I have avoided it long enough. I've been making these little uh, battery box fronts for my R2-D2. Uh, and I took a couple weeks off. That's what happened. I was working on this and I got to the part where I had to make these little clevis joints up here, this little T and these little, these guys. And I just got so tired at the thought of all the tedium involved in that. Reader, I put it away for a while. So we're back. Uh, we're gonna lay this stuff out and I'm going to start. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. We have. One, two. I've got some scrap aluminum here. What is that? What is that? What is that? I guess I could get four out of this. All right.
right, so uh, these aren't the prettiest parts in the world, but they are completely serviceable for what I'm doing here because what I'm doing is aesthetic machining. I got to get it to look pretty darn close to that. And that's happening. That's that's not the issue. It's a funny thing because I started out doing aesthetic machining, which is not high precision. It's hard. It's only roughly repeatable. It's a lot easier than real machine. How do I say real machining? I can't say real machining. That's I don't even have the skill base from which to adjudicate such. But what I can tell you as someone who started out as an aesthetic machinist and became more serious about refinement, repeatability, setting stuff up in jigs, etc., is that uh, you can get a lot done with a mill without knowing a lot. I that's just really true. So what I'm doing here is that your basic, it's like, I'm just trying to get it to look like that. And I don't even need to really worry about a back transition very much because no one's, no one's going to see it. Don't get me wrong. I'll refine it just the tiniest bit, but. Hey, those don't look half bad. See that? I don't know why I'm giving them music, but yeah. Look, this is aesthetic machining. You can just round it on that by eye. pattern drawn just for a guide going to drill the five thirty seconds hole there and then round that out we are in the home stretch do, do, do. all right so i want to drill a reasonably consistent hole in all four of these uh instead of setting a vice stop i'm literally just going to hold this here push this down on the parallels and then i'll Use a magnifier to make sure my drill is centered correctly. I know, after all of my COVID work of being like super, super precise, being a little bit sloppy here, and the hole's not perfectly centered. I can tell you, having worked on the original R2, that they are not, that they are built to about the same standard. They really are. They, they, they're somewhat semi-improvised. You'll see. I'll put these together. You'll see. It's going to look great. It's going to look great. So I've cut all the major parts on this. I cut the clevis, the angles, the round, the, and I've been using the bottom here to hold on, but now I'm about to slice these all off down here. We're just gonna give those a little bit of uh Very pleased. That's great. Awesome. Okay, so that, 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 and that. Barreling down on it. Uh, right, these guys. So I'm gonna slice these guys down. Oh, there they are. Ooh, okay. Now, what do we have left? We have one cut left. One cut left. It's these guys. It's the facets on these guys. Oh my God. Oh, I did that on the belt sander and that's not bad. Let's see if I can uh, repeat that performance. Come, come on over.
I think that is all the parts. I've got my little faceted diamonds here, diamonds. I was going to try to throw this on the polisher, but I've got some topology. I've got topography I've got to get rid of here. So let's head back over there. These are, these are almost done. I'm very happy with how they've all come out, but now it's time. I'm a leg man. This is something. A friend of mine had a dude break up with her. And when he broke up with her, he tearfully told her, I'm a leg man. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but I know my friend has terrific legs. She does. She always has. I don't know what his problem was. Anyway, <laughs> I'm a leg man today because, yeah, it's time to um, to muck about with R2's footsies. Yeah, so I've got to, yeah, really sort of dismantle this whole dude. Uh, that is... Look at these parts I turned so long ago, 2005. 2005 is when I finished my R2. Coming up on 18 freaking years. Anyway, um, those are the shoulders. These are the, that's the back of the V. This is the front of the V. Yeah. So look, I mean, one thing about R2 is that R2 is dirty. So. I'm not gonna go too, I'm not gonna get too bent out of shape about like R2 being dirty because he's dirty. That's just what he is. It looks like, yeah, okay, those are in with epoxy, I guess. I can't really get in there anymore. Um, so this is the, Left leg, right. This, 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 this isn't the left leg. This is the right leg. Wait a minute. What the hell? This is the right. There are some pieces to, oh man, there's a lot of work to do here. Okay, so what I have here is a mix of some resin parts and some metal parts, just like the real R2. I had a shop assistant years ago who built these motors for me for the feet and I'm uninclined to remove them or change them. They're a little heavy, but that was a big deal. So I'm gonna let that stand, but I am gonna pull the leg piston here. Oh, look at that. All right. So, whoo, I've got a painted, oh yeah, I remember making these. Geez, there's not a lot of room for adjustment around here. Even all the scrapes and bruises that R2 has, those are all, <laughs> R2's filth is canon. Yeah. 
Why did I, what, what, what did I ever need such a long screw in there for? I didn't. Ooh. Okay, so, yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's good. Ah, oh, I see, I should have pulled these guys out first because, so this is not, this is without a doubt the right leg. This is the right leg because the battery boxes face the front. These guys live in here. You are monolithic, that's right, I did that. So let's, um, okay. I pulled out, there it is. And somewhere along the line, I rejiggered the left and right legs, but there's nothing that needs replacing here because I'm going to label this correctly. And that should separate out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, right, it's right. Now, the thing is, it's going to be years before I need to worry about power for this R2, so I'm not going to. I am going to, yeah, look at that. Ah. Yep, I'm gonna wrap this up and thread it in the leg and screw these puppies together. Yep, that's great. Oh, look at that. I did that that way. Fascinating. Okay. So clearly what I can do here is I can reassemble this bad boy. It's fun having an R2-D2 leg on my desk for the first time in forever. It is super fun. Super fun! It, this might be the left leg. I might have mislabeled everything. Um, let's see here. It's not the right leg, it's the left leg. The whole thing was assembled backwards. The whole thing was assembled backwards. It's because, uh, hold on. See, this is the problem I have, is that I've got pictures from New Hope where these buttons are on the back and this thing's on the front. Hold on. Here's Kenny in his. And so that makes this See, I was following the Kenny R2. Oh. There seems to have been a lot of interchangery. I think this is the left leg. I think the New Hope R2s really seem, as well as the Kenner, Kenny Baker, to have these little dots up front facing that, facing the front. Here's Alec Guinness. Do there's Alec Guinness with an R2. See, look, I know it's semi-arbitrary, but here's an Alec Guinness with an R2, and these 
are facing the front. So this is the left leg and I'm going to hold it to that. So I totally got it wrong. It is the left leg. I guess I put it back wrong. I am the asshole. I did it wrong. Okay, so there is a left leg and there is a, nope, nope, it's a left foot, left foot. My left foot. Dude, if no one's seen that in a long time, it remains amazing. Okay, so that. Oh, right, that, of course that wouldn't move. Um, cool, so this is left and I'm gonna label it on the inside here, L. I am gonna remake these parts. That'll be another one day build coming up soon. But for right now, that leg is good. These lock nuts are really only required if R2 is actually gonna move. So I can ship him. Yeah, he is shipping somewhere in the next year. Uh, that'll be revealed where he's shipping, where he's going. But for right now, good. So this is left leg and this is right leg. If I want to pop it off later, I certainly can. It is modular. I'm just gonna use a little bit of flexi glue on four points and suck it in there. Dude, R2D2 is on my workbench. What could be wrong with the world? is the answer. Okay, so this is right foot and I'm gonna label it on the inside. Nope, is it the right foot? It is, everything's labeled wrong. Every, every, or I'm labeled, uh, let's see here. Yeah, yeah, that's good. You know, it helps that it's been banging around my life for the last 20 some odd years. So my assembly of the parts of the feet details here, there's not really enough to throw in a, I mean, I could do a threaded hole with a bottom tap in here and thread it into here and like, I just, it's not necessary. What I'm doing is I'm pinning everything with brass and then using thread locker to hold it together. And thread locker is a, it is made to have a similar mechanical movement as the metal that it's holding. I guess it's probably optimized for steel if I had to hazard a guess, but I'm also gonna assume it's fine for aluminum. These things are freaking stationary. They just sit here. I'm gonna JB weld them in place and they'll look great. Oh, right, and then the last thing is I will uh, pop these guys in. I will polish these and give them a coat of some lacquer and then that they glue in at the last. That's the very final dealy bob. It's lovely to see all these pieces again. I spent a long time on this. I spent five years assembling my art too. Oh, look at those battery boxes with their copper cables. Um, yep, yeah, those look great. No issues with that whatsoever. Not quite a bearing surface, is it? Unnecessary. Um, so, so buttons. Okay, so I'm gonna do a full assembly on one of these so you can see it all in its glory. There it is. That's the one I that's the one I made it and molded years ago and you can see that it's got kind of ooh it's all like yeah it's all sort of curvy from sitting under pressure and this is the aluminum one I made for this build. And um look there are small tiny differences 5 10 thou here and there. Aesthetic machining. It's a, 
It's a lot easier than regular machining. <laughs> I mean, you can get in just as much trouble. All right, so I really gotta let these guys. All right, I still need to let a couple things dry. So let me get this going. What I'm laughing about, what I was laughing about was that inside the footwell of R2, I found this piece. This piece is this piece and it had gotten lost and I had assumed that it was gone. So I remade it, but it was not gone. And this is actually, there's no need to replace this. That is, um, this is exactly how R2 works. You, you fix a part, you replace it. It's a slightly different white. It's all part of the story. Um, so this guy, these guys, they just sort of sit here. Got a big fat magnet there. So I guess I could almost like pop rivet in a piece of metal across there. Let's see if I have it. There is no reason for any of this foot detailing to be aluminum. It's always white. There are people that make these half moons out of aluminum, which is amazing. But man, it is so taking a long road. I mean, more power to you, I swear. I love, I love the all aluminum R2s that are out there. That every single part is some bit of aluminum, but just here to say. Okay, so, oh. Oh, yeah, I can just do that. I'm gonna do a flat head screw that goes at angle in here, threaded. You don't have to worry about hitting the mechanics here because I got plenty of meat there. Threaded, I'm gonna bring it up until it contacts that magnet, boop, boop, and that will be my closure. That's great, I'm very happy with that, okay. not bad it's not great but it's not a, it's not terrible so let's see nope not that one this one good that's good I like that and this one could go in too and that goes like that and then yeah nice nice and positive this is gonna be a static display model, so these don't need crazy amounts of uh, let's go. Good. All right. Um, cool, cool beans. Let's um, clean the area to be glued with a little acetone and we'll dress it later. Okay, I like you. I like you too. I like you. <laughs> the insides of these are all labeled wrong. <laughs> all right. Uh, is it possible? No because it's got blue facing this way, and that means that's the right foot. And this is the left. This is exactly how we would implement repairs on the real R2, by the way. There's no, there's no difference between what I'm doing and actual like on-set mucking about with the dude. With the dude. With the dude. Uh, sort of voce. Um,
it's worth talking about what I mean by soften. Um, the backs of these, are, this is a piece of bent aluminum that does that. And it's welded to a piece of aluminum that's wrapped around like that with two end cap pieces and a back cap. And that means that in here, the, the join is not super sharp. So when I say soften the back, I specifically mean just take a little bit of relief off the corner there so that this can sit all the way back in there and have its orientation be regular. That's good. Yeah? Am I happy with that? That's good. Yes. All right, we're gonna clamp that. Yeah, that's number one. Here comes number two. Number two. Good. I want a little bit of extra room in these. Just the tiniest bit. Just the tiniest bit, really. Oh, it's a little too tight, right? Actually, that's just what I want. I want it a little too tight. I'm always overdoing my tolerance. Just a tight. Yeah, that's good. One and two are very happy. Three. I mean, I guess I can sand it down if I don't get it right, but let's, um, let's get it right. Okay, and last but not least, number four, a little gut. Good, I'm happy with all of these. Why am I going through all this trouble? Because I'm going to tap them. Yes, we're gonna do that. Um, Put away the quarter twenty, so now we're going to do the six thirty-two. One tapped. Six thirty-two is about the smallest. It's about the smallest drill I would chuck into a drill. The smallest tap I would trust in a drill. And I'm also using a um, spiral point on this. Spiral points, they send the swarf ahead of themselves. And I'm gonna attach these together with, oh, uh, Phillips head screws. Oh, that too? Yeah, that'd be nice. These are stainless, yeah. These are stainless, right? But I'll see these through the back, and that won't be very right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Excellent. Countersunk, and that is for good. That's what I wanted it to be. Excellent. Very happy. It's all going well. Last one, I'm just gonna uh, show you what I'm doing here. So I clamped this in place to the right height. Then I drilled a through hole for a tap, 632 tap. Then without removing the clamp, I simply countersunk it and tapped through it. And that allows me a really nice orientation. Plus I countersunk it so it goes below the surface. And now these two parts are nice and solid. Good. Beauty. Truth and beauty. Very happy. I hear what you're saying. You're saying, Adam, how are you going to get the jewel-like quality of the R2-D2 OG Blue on this part after you polish it? And my answer is simple. I'm going to use the OG method, which is Dykem, uh, which is this stuff, steel blue marking fluid. I believe the originals were done. Um, but first I have to polish these. Do I really need to polish them? Maybe I don't need to polish them. Maybe what I need to do. So we're gonna do, we're gonna put these on here. Like, no, you can't see that, I'm so sorry. So we're gonna glue these little jewels on here like this. They're, this is just some double stick tape. 
Um, I'm gonna hit this with a little acetone so it's nice and clean. Ah, oh, frack. That looks awful. Oh, well, actually, maybe not too bad. Now, marking fluid, meant for marking, is often quite... scratch-prone. That's the word I was looking for. Thanks, brain. Thanks for being slow. Um, so I'm gonna protect it with some guitar lacquer here. Right. While that dries, I'm gonna install, is it cheap evil that I wanna use? Or is it super flex? I think it's super flex. Oh, there we go, a loom bond. That'll do it. Um, yeah, see, I think the lumen will do good. Okay, cool. We're going to back this up. We're going to, we're going to cut this in half. Let that sit. And now this will be our aluminum, aluma bond. Tongue depressor. This is lovely. This is a nice, uh, this is a nice approach to work. I like where I'm at here. So we're gonna we're gonna mix this up. Good. Now we get some get some stuff out there. Awesome. Also seated. I've got a little bit of a press fit here, but also the glue. So there's a lot, a lot holding on to it. Um, plus. Yeah, that's great. So now I think, yeah, so now I can do a little bit of, actually, can I touch those? I can. Okay, cool. So I'm going to put a little aluminum, a little bit of this Aluma Bond at the bottom of each jewel. I don't want it to squeeze out, but I do want a little bit of, a, I do want it to have a foothold. There they are. They're all pretty. Here they are. They're all dropped right in. I had a beautiful shot. Forgot to press record. Ah! I machined all of these guys years ago. Uh, these little pluggy plugs. Feet look pretty good. Oh, right. There was a, um, oi. Oh, yeah, I can fix that. Bot's not the problem. Um, the, uh, oh. The uh, battery fronts are in, and I'm pleased with them. He looks good and properly dirty. So here is one leg. Yeah, the screws I thought I was missing are here. It's a lovely leg. I do has got good eight legs. Uh, so this is the right shoulder. This is the right shoulder because these two pips are facing forward. They go back and forth through all of the Star Wars movies, but I like them forward, so I'm going with that. That is the left boot. This is the right boot. Also, my Aluma Power, uh, uh, my Aluma Bond seems to be holding really well. It's a nice positive grab. So, let me give you a better view, maybe, perhaps. Oh, 
Um, all right. No, that's a good looking leg. Without a doubt. This is beautiful. Look at it. Right leg facing forward. Look at into the future. R2 the MacGuffin. He can bring the plot forward. <clears throat> Excellent. Oh, another beautiful leg. Yeah. Yeah, you look lovely, don't you? You look ready for adventure. Well, thank you guys for joining me for this quickie one day, two, two day build. Uh, this was really fun. And there will be more R2 uh, builds in the near future. I mean, the next few months. R2 is gonna go have an adventure um, and I will explain that later on. But uh, for right now, if you're on the fence about making your own R2-D2, if this looks like fun to you, you should totally do it. It is completely worth doing. And it is a, it's a big build, but it's a very doable build. You can do it out of wood, you can do it out of styrene, you can 3D print it, you can do it out of cardboard or paper. Um, long before I met and became friends with Tom Sachs, I had a, a, a picture of his all paper R2-D2 that he made back in what I think is like the early aughts or the late 90s. Um, if you are thinking about making your R2, I want to tell you to go do it. The R2-D2 Builders Club has all the information that you need. Join it. They've got lots of plans and dimensions, but know that there is no specific one perfect set of dimensions for all R2s. Um, I had the Kenny Baker R2 next to my desk for years, a couple of years, uh, and I've measured several of the original R2-D2s, bits and bobs and pieces, and every last thing is just a little bit different. It's all, it was all made by hand. So if you were, if you wanted to embark on an R2, but you're not sure about the dimensions, don't worry about that. Close enough is good enough, because that was the case for the original series. Um, second of all, you can make it out of anything. Did I already say that? Yes, I think I did. I'm just excited because R2-D2's on my bench and that's always awesome. Thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you next time. Right side again. So, it seemed to me stingy to work on R2 parts and not eventually put R2-D2 back together again, Humpty Dumpty.
There it is. Your reward <laughs> for sticking around for the battery box handles. Thank you guys for joining me for this. R2 and I are gonna go have lunch.